What's up, YouTube? Your boy, JD. Making a uh, long overdue video on my 5.8 ground station. Um, people have been asking me about it for like the last two years and what I've been using, this here and that. And I just really haven't had the time to just, you know, break it down to what I got. But anyway, let's dive right off into this. Bam, there it is. This is my uh, 5.8 ground station on a tripod. Pretty simple, standard tripod. It's got the pan and tilt on it. Basically, all I did was make a um, a wooden mount to go here on top of it to hold the goodies. And what I got here is a, um, as you can see, two dual diversities, 5.8 gigahertz receivers. It's, those are uh, FR632s. Both of these are 32 channel dual diversity. And they're going into a Eagle Eye Eagle Tree. Which basically, the Eagle Eye Eagle Tree is just picking out which signal is the best coming between these four antennas that this thing can hold. And it's going to send the signal down to this TV monitor, which the TV monitor, of course, is not needed. I fly off of. Um, goggles I have a, a fast shark cable that goes directly into my goggles from the Eagle Tree. But the um the monitor though, it's just there for my buddies. They always ask, you know, where are you at so they can see where I'm flying or you know, we have people to walk up on us all the time and they wanna peek and see what we're doing too. This is just a good way to get them from you know, wanting to see my goggles <laughs> for the most part of it. And they can just watch what I'm doing and just be amazed by it. But um but yeah this this is the ground station my secret to the says 22, 22 kilometers out, no video breakup. Video is pretty rock solid for the most part. Um, this is pretty much it, but it's, it's more than me style. It's just not the ground station itself. It's the type of antennas you use, how you actually aim the antennas, then how you fly. Um, you have to fly within the beam. Different antennas, of course, have different <laughs> vertical beam width and horizontal beam widths. And you just have to be knowledgeable and know what type of antennas you're using and know how to stay within the beam to be successful. But then as well, you, you have to know how to aim the ground station um, as well. You know, different places you fly will create different um, needs for antennas or different levels of angle on the ground station ahead and so on and so forth. But let me dig off until I got a little illustration here to show some of the guys that don't know. And don't laugh at my stick figure guy. Or my tree. <laughs> but anyway, um, obviously this is the ground station. <clears throat> That's a tree. You never really want to just point the ground station directly at a tree. You would not get any kind of range out of this. Um, Give or take, you may get lucky and get a thousand meters out of this with a plane or quad or whatever or not. But as far as doing any kind of long range flying, you won't get very far with it pointed directly at a tree. Um, but with this being said, though, if you're flying mini quads like on a racetrack and it's got a bunch of woody areas you got to go through or something like that, depending on what kind of antenna you use, it'll be perfect for this kind of setup. You know, with the dual diversion and everything, because it'll, it'll, of course, it'll offset it'll switch back and forth between which antenna it has the best reception. So, it just, it, once again, it's, it's all about knowing your setup, knowing what you're flying into, and knowing what antennas you got will do you the best job. Um, but here's another illustration. As far as when we fly the planes and everything, what we always do, we try to get more, the most space possible between the ground station and the trees. And as you can see, I can easily angle up the actual ground station to where the reception is actually coming over top of the trees. So that means all I have to do is try to fly above the tree line, of course, which most commonly you will, not, you know, unless you're just doing some fast and low flying, low ground or something like that. But <laughs> typically you're up higher than the trees. So as long as you get the ground station pointed to where the beam is over top of the trees, your reception will be perfectly fine. Uh, depending on the distance. Now, if you get out there 10K, 20K or so, something like that, as you can see how this is kind of going up in an angle, the reception signal is 
the higher up the angle, the higher up you had to fly in the, out in the distance. So you had to keep that in mind. So with this here being, say for example, a mile out, for me to be able to go 10K, I would for sure have to be at 400 feet on the other end of this and still get good perception. If I go further than 10K or so, just for example, you have to fly higher up because, of course, as you see, the beam is constantly going up the further out you go. So you got to keep that in mind. But um, let's dive off into the antennas that I'm using. And I have several different ones. Most common one, you got your Omni antenna, clover leaf. This is a um, master ash screw. I love video arrow system antennas. That has the, been the biggest part of my success. Um, <clears throat> this antenna is really good, you know, especially if you're a beginner and you're bad about flying behind yourself or you want to fly behind yourself. This antenna will cover you in all angles. And typically, this antenna alone is good for about two miles. Two miles out, you get good reception off of this by itself, as long as there's no crazy obstruction on the ground. But that's what I started out with. And then I stepped up to the pepper box. This guy here was a game changer. Um, still use it every time I fly. This is perfect for if you need a little bit of penetration, flying through some wooded areas with many quads, or if you are doing some long range and you want to fly a wide flight pattern, this is perfect for that. Um, I've flown out with this personally over 10K and video was still coming in rock solid on this one antenna alone. Uh, my buddy Will on another flight was following me with his ground station. He has the same setup as I got and um, I was actually 16K out and he was still able to pick me up clear as a whistle with this antenna alone. Um, but it's, it's really good, kind of costly, but it's, it's really good, especially with the mini quads. Mini quads and planes penetration, wooded areas and stuff like that, you, you can't go wrong with this particular antenna. Um, another one is really good at penetration. It's the uh, the Fat Sharp patch. This is not the, the mini patch. This is actually the 13 DBI patch antenna. Once again, mini quad flyers, stuff like that, you cannot go wrong with this antenna. This will punch through. With these three antennas alone, I have literally flown behind buildings over a hundred yards out, brick builders now, and video never did drop out. So that's pretty much a testimony within itself between these antennas. But for the you know, if you want to do more range, or whatever not, you can get off into the uh, the helicopters. <clears throat> Same company, Video Aerial Systems. This is a uh, five turn helical. With this antenna alone, I, I went out over 16K, I believe. And um, it's, it has a pretty wide beam width. The um, vertical part of it really is not that tall, but it's pretty wide. And um, this picks up really good as far as doing long range. But you get around 16, 15, 16K, the video will start getting a little fuzzy with you here and there. Once again, it just depends on where you are, what location you're flying in. If you're flying in a heavy city environment with a bunch of Wi-Fi's and stuff like that, it really doesn't matter what you use. <laughs> you're going to get some kind of interference unless you're flying like extremely high up in the air. Simple as that. But if you're out in the county areas and stuff like that, these antennas, these four here alone, will do the trick for some pretty good long range. Um, or medium long range, 16K or so. But if you're trying to stretch it out there like I did, going out 22K or something like that, you got to step up to the big boys. And that is your 10-turn helicals. And same company, Video Aerial Systems. Um, this is what I use to go out 22K with. And based what I did, I had one set up to where it was kind of slightly pitched up and that was a little bit higher up. And with that in return, that gave me the ability to go crazy far. Video was rock solid the whole entire time, but it is very, very directional. So you have to be careful with that part of it and make sure you stay within the beam. Well, and you just got to understand the 
as I was saying, I ran out of memory on my phone. <laughs> but with the uh, the ten turn helicals, I mean, is they're, they're so directional. It's it's almost crazy. But if you can fly within the beam whip and understand what the width and the vertical or horizontal and vertical of the beam is. I mean, you, you you can, it's unlimited. I mean, with 5.8, it will never drop out. I mean, pretty much, like, no dropouts at all. As long as you have no kind of extraction from the ground station pointed out to where you're flying, it, it, it's unlimited. I mean, we have not maxed out 5.8 yet, and that's mainly because of this, um, these two antennas. You don't have to have two of them. I just got two because... You know, as I was saying earlier, um, you know, I typically have one pointed slightly higher up than the other. And that just mainly because they are so directional. And the further out you go, of course, as I was saying in the illustration, the higher up you will have to fly. And that just kind of gives me a, a, a safety, I guess you can say, to guarantee that I will stay in the beam of one of the two of these antennas. And that way, you know, I can fly out 22K and still have good video reception. But um, that's that's pretty much sums it up. I mean, you know, what I have here on the ground station, it really is overkill. You do not have to have two dual diversity receivers. You don't even have to have the eagle eye. I mean, you can do some crazy long range just with one of these receivers by itself. But you have to know what type of antennas to use. Be knowledgeable of the vertical and the horizontal width of the antennas. And knowing how to aim this and knowing how to fly within the beams. Um, and that's based upon, you know, the type of antennas that you use. And that's really all you got to have is just one. But I, I like to use two just because, I mean, I do fly some pretty wide patterns sometimes. Just in, you know, I like to explore. <laughs> that's my thing. So I have a whole selection of antennas I can put on here. And no matter which direction I go or however or not, I'm, I'm video wise. I'm, I'm still good. I'm still covered. But um, again, as I was saying, this is my key to success, and um, I just want to share this with you guys. Like I said, several people have asked me. Um, well, a couple of hundred of people, I should say, have asked me what I've been using. I just kind of blowed them off because I knew I just couldn't be like, hey, just use this kind of antenna, and that'd be it. I wanted to break it down to them so people will understand what it actually takes to do successful long range and another big success I think <clears throat> which I know some people argue with me about this is the the milliwatt of the video transmitter that you use you know when I first started out I was using 200 milliwatts 600 milliwatt you know and with the the cloverleaf type antenna by itself with a 600 milliwatt I mean I was literally only getting you know roughly a mile and a half two miles by itself and that was kind of was it you know so once I stepped up and bought a um, a thousand milliwatt I was like oh my god you know I went another mile I went three miles this time with just with this antenna by itself so the higher milliamp video text you can get will give you more range it's just simple as that that's why on the minute talent the uh, mini drag, which I don't know why I have one on the mini drag. I just bought it because it was cheap. <laughs> but the drag doesn't have the flight time to do any kind of crazy long range. It just it doesn't. But on the mid Talon, the Eve, the Finwing Penguin, those guys all have 2,000 or 1,500 milliwatt video TX. And um, those would have gave me the, what helped give me the great success at going out 22k was the higher wattage milliamp video transmitters so that's something to keep in mind too i'm not saying that with a 600 milliwatt i mean if you're out in the county type areas no type of houses you're flying over this and that you you might can go you know 15 16k it just kind of just depends you know but the higher the milliwatt the greater chance you will have at flying longer range flights but anyway that's my shakedown that's my ground station. Hope this helped you guys. If you have any questions or anything like that, just shoot me a comment. I'll answer them. I'll try to explain them. Explain the, you know, whatever you're asking as soon as possible. But anyway, but that's the setup. Hope you guys like it.
Peace. I'm going to bed. <laughs>